Stephen Milne Adventure Spirit Award, and one of the things that ALS absolutely uh, requires is having an adventure spirit because it is a, it's a moving target. So uh, I want to ask, does anybody in here in the room remember the World Cup? <clears throat> does anybody? Come on, you can answer the question. It's okay. Yes, you can nod your heads. <laughs> there was a game. It was USA versus Portugal. Does anybody remember that one? We didn't win the World Cup, by the way. <laughs> Do you guys know that at least? Well, uh, it turns out that Steve Finger, Stephen Finger is a huge soccer fan, uh, and he's also a professor of economics at the University of uh, South Carolina. Uh, and he also has a brilliant mind, and it should come as no surprise that he's surrounded by such a loving and caring family, including his wife, uh, Kara, who's here with him today. This next award is given to somebody who strives to creatively combat this disease. Not just within their own, own, own community, but around the world. And when we received the nominations for Mr. Finger, it became very apparent uh, that people recognized that he reached out from where he lived and really touched people around the world. And his network was big, and it was ready to activate. Uh, behind him and he brought all of them together for a fundraising event in New York City during that USA versus Portugal game and uh, raised more than $100,000 for ALS research which has allowed the Institute to push forward the precision medicine program, the SED1 program and others that you heard about today. But to say that Stephen is getting this award for that alone would be far from the truth. Uh, he's a staunch advocate for ALS. He's written a number of articles that have gone viral, been uh, posted online in a couple of national uh, online magazines, Huffington Post, etc. And he's raised an incredible amount of awareness. And in one of his blogs, Stephen talked about the Ice Bucket Challenge funds and challenged everybody in the ALS community, especially those that received the funds, like the Institute, to think differently about how they would invest them. And he recommended that people do two things, invest it boldly and invest it urgently. So as a thoughtful leader and undoubtedly with an adventurous spirit, we're honored to recognize you, Stephen Finger, with this year's Stephen Mill and Adventurous Spirit Award. Please come up and accept it. Moving quick. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats, man. Thanks. Um, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here, um, obviously uh, an incredible honor to get this uh, award, um, especially when you think about the other people being recognized today. I think they all serve as a great reminder of what <clears throat> uh, each of us individually is able to accomplish. I mean, it's also humbling to look at these lists of names of people who have been recognized in the past and to see the, the number of patients and advocates here today and here this weekend. Um, we see Jenny, uh, Jenny Dwyer continuing to fight. We see Steve Sailing. We see Eric Valor fighting every day. And it's more than them. It's, we see, <clears throat> uh, sorry, we see uh, Sarah Cognelis writer blog, a blog that makes grown men, not to name any names, sit in front of Facebook, clicking refresh, refresh, <laughs> waiting for the next post. Um, so this is, as people have mentioned, a terrible community to be connected with, but obviously a community filled with really amazing people. Um, so as our panelists have mentioned right now, there's no cause, no cause uh, of ALS. Uh, there's no cure. And so I don't have a choice. I have ALS. Um, but I think what's amazing is looking around the room and seeing the number of people who have chosen to make this their life work. Um, and so we see Dr. Perrin and the team at TDI who choose every day to make this their fight. 
And I think, for me, one of the impressive things about TDI is there's, there's no ego. Trying to figure out uh, whether or not some existing drug affects prognosis, uh, progression 10% isn't the sexiest science. But it might be the fastest way we can find a treatment. Um, and so when we think about 10%, it doesn't sound like much when we're thinking about the size of a candy bar. And it's obviously not our end goal. But 10% might mean I get to see a couple more of Mary Dare and James's birthdays. Ten, how many more times would that allow me to hear Papa come get me, Papa come out, come out wherever you are in the morning when I wake. And so I want to remind the scientists this work is not insignificant. Um, and so I want to thank TDI and the Hayward family and the Reich family and the Nieto family and for all they cho choose to do for us patients. Um, as was mentioned, we had this uh, event in New York, which I think was a testament to how my family and friends have chosen to respond. We had a whole bunch of friends gathered to show their support for my family and do a couple things I love. Uh, watch the U.S. national soccer team and drink beer. Um, <laughs> but it was more than that. They all chose to be exceedingly generous. They chose to give to TDI. And if we're going to talk about choices, I can't fail to mention that um, about 10 years ago, when she was a student up the road at HBS, Kara could have had her choice of dozens or hundreds of potential suitors. And instead, she chose to stick with her long distance boyfriend. Now she has a choice how she wants to face this disease and every day chooses to push our family forward. Um, there's nothing fair about what she faces, um, but the strength with which she faces this burden is an inspiration to me. Um, so I'm getting this award based on finding innovative ways to fundraise, um, which seems a bit crazy this year, given what Pat Quinn and Peter Frades and Anthony were able to accomplish, right? 100,000 bucks, what's that? It's pocket change for these guys. But I think what's important to remember is that Pat and Pete were very active before this thing ever took off, right? Um, they never dreamed that this ice bucket challenge would take off like it did. Millions of people made videos. It just happened to be that Anthony's resonated with people in a different way, which led to tens of millions of clicks, tens of millions of people who got a window into this disease. And so I don't think the takeaway from this summer is that we all need to be searching for the next ice bucket challenge. I think the takeaway is that we all need to continue to work, right? Hope and Steve continuing to share their story. Deb continuing to make bags, continuing to be such a huge advocate in the familial community, right? Through this summer, we've raised awareness to a level we never dreamed of. We've seen what that has meant for fundraising, and I think that gives us all a lot of responsibility in terms of making sure we continue to push this forward. Um, 
And so they talked about their predictions on the, the next year. We think about 2014 as it, come to the, as it comes to an end. And I think if we think about what we were able to accomplish this year with the ice bucket challenge and we think about how accelerating the precision medicine program is going to open new doors. While we might not remember 2014 as the year in which we found the cure, although there are a couple months left, <laughs> get back to work, um, I think it will be remembered as a year in which we overcame some huge, huge hurdles. Um, so lastly, so during the World Cup, uh, U.S. fans used a chant and overused the chant and continue to overuse the chant. But I think it applies equally as well to our community. And so repeat after me. I, 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 believe, I believe, I believe that, I believe that, I believe that we, I believe that we will win. 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 Thank you. It's an honor.